Okay, it is 7 p.m. Okay, maybe we'll just give um, everybody one minute. Um, Felicia, I think you're here. Can you just check with me that you can hear me and that you can see the screen? Yeah, I can see you and hear you well. Awesome, okay. I believe I am recording because it says pause recording or stop recording. So I think we should be recording. Let's give that a minute. Hope everybody has had their dinner <laughs> or had a great day at least, you know what I mean? It's a Tuesday, so Monday blues should be over. We all should be ready <laughs> to take on the week. Okay, I think I'm gonna start. Um, so good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. Um, literally, you guys could be doing anything at all in this hour, but you decided to commit this with me. So I'm very, very appreciative. You guys could be watching Netflix or reading a book or having dinner, hanging out with your friends, but you're here today. So that shows me that you are here to either learn about linguistics, <laughs> learn how to speak from me, or you want some motivation uh, for your life. Uh, you're looking for some sort of inspiration. And that also says a lot about you. And I want to applaud you for seeking out information in various ways. I don't ever feel like there's a wrong way uh, to find purpose in your life. So it could be through books. It could be through podcasts. It could be through articles that you read online. Or it could be sessions like this, like this workshop, the Speech Linguistic Patterns Workshop. So thank you guys again for joining me. So I thought before I begin proper, that I first introduce myself. Let's see if I can go to the next slide. All right. Hello, everybody. Nice to meet you. So my name is Rose Aslin. I'm not sure if you were here last month for the first session that I had where I already introduced myself. But if you are new here today, then I thought I would introduce myself again. So I do have a day job. I just finished my day job, just as you have, I'm sure. And I work in TV. I've worked in TV for over seven years now. Um, that is something that I am passionate about. But I do have a side gig, uh, which, I, which is hosting. So I do public events. I've hosted for music events, art festivals, um, sports events, award ceremonies, and I've been doing it for 10 years. So I've always been the entertainer. And I saw that as another passion of mine and, and it still very much is. In fact, I have a show later in April and I've always felt the glamor of being on stage with the spotlight and the microphone in hand. But recently I felt, you know, I, I had this different priority inside of me where I felt I didn't wanna just entertain and, and give people a reason to escape from, you know, their problems. You come to my shows, you have a great time. I'll tell you that, you know, you will laugh, you would dance and I just make you forget all your problems. But, you know, as you grow older, you feel like the, there is more that you can do with your voice. There's more that you can do with your platform. So instead of just being a host, I felt like I needed to either teach or I can coach and I can inspire people with my ability to do public speaking. So this gig right here that you're seeing me do is months and months, almost close to a year in the making. So again, I'm very appreciative to Speech Academy Asia for giving me this opportunity to speak with you guys tonight and you guys also wanting to, to hear me out. So the topic for today, power of action is actually very, very personal to me. I can share with you guys tips that has worked for me. Like I said, I've done you know public hosting for 10 years and suddenly now to, to do a career change and suddenly wanting to teach, wanting to coach is different. I don't have the credentials for that. I'm not a certified therapist or psychologist. So for me to come into this game is, you know, different and it was very, very daunting. So like yourself, I believe you are looking for motivation and, you know, motivation gets you started, but it is certain habits, habitual your habituality is the one that keeps you going. So I wanted to find the motivation to start doing this career change. It was a nagging thing in my head where you need to do something in your voice, you need to do something, you need to make a real change in this world. What legacy are you leaving behind? That was in my mind for months on end and I really, really needed to do something about it. I couldn't figure out how to start or who to tell. So for me, I go to bookstores. I go to books and try to find inspiration there. So I went to the bookstore and something 
basically drew me to the business section. I've never gone to the business section. I'm always a self-help girl. And there was a book. There was a book that really, really moved me, really helped me, and is a big reason why I'm here today given, being given this opportunity. So this book is by Rob Moore. I have it right here. It's by my bed. I finished this in three days. It's Rob Moore, Start Now, Get Perfect Later. It is a very easy book, super thin, and it has very great, actionable, practical tips that you guys can, can take with you and can actually just consider and uh, pursue because, yeah, he has like very amazing quotes and very easy steps uh, for you to check in with yourself, whether you've done those things. So I love this book by Rob Moore once again. And many quotes in there, but the one that stood out of, of the many is, it's never too late to start, but it's always too late to wait. And I believe this wholeheartedly after several conversations with friends, when I was doubting myself about, you know, I'm already in this game neck deep in public hosting, who am I to go into teaching? You know, I don't have the certification. What are they going to think of me? You know, it's one thing to be good at something, but another thing to want to educate that and, and pass that on to other people. And I was very, very aware of that, of my, my shortcomings. And I felt like, you know what, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. And it's too late. It's too late already. I'm, I've already been in the media industry for so long. I've, I've been hosting for so long. It's too late to change. But the truth is, it's, it's too late to wait. That's that's the truth because life, the life that you live should be authentic to you and you should pursue your, your goals and, and you should feel like you're living this full and colorful life and, and different opportunities can lead you to different things. So you should never, first of all, give up on yourself or shut out on yourself. So again, this book by Rob Moore is, uh, has been absolutely uh, inspirational for me. So I definitely do recommend it. Uh, again, it's an easy, easy read for you. Uh, so do check that out. So I thought I would just put us all in the right set of mind. I know I'm speaking to parents here. I'm speaking to adults. You know, we're not like kids with like all these ambitions. We are sometimes feel like we are set in our ways, but I want you to know that it's never too late to start whatever it is that you want to pursue. Okay, the power of action, that's the topic for today. So get in the right mindset that it's never too late. In fact, you can start tomorrow. It could be you saying to yourself, I'm going to do this one day, or you could say to yourself, this is day one. So I thought I would just do a little bit of recap uh, from last month's workshop. If you were not able to view it on YouTube, I'm not sure if it's on YouTube even. Maybe it should be on YouTube. <laughs> and then I also, uh, if- Sorry, yeah. sorry, Rose. Uh, are you able to check if there are any parents in the waiting room? In the waiting room? Yeah, because I don't seem to be able to see on my end. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Admit all. There you go. Yeah, thank you. Thank you no so worries. much. No worries. Sorry, sorry for this stuff. It's, okay. it's okay. It's okay. Thanks for telling me. I'm in. <laughs> okay. People are joining. Wonderful. Welcome, welcome. You had not missed a thing. Uh, I just basically introduced myself a little bit and also introduced this wonderful book that basically inspired my journey here. Um, I would share again. Yeah, so this book, um, I thought this is an important book because I'm going to make some references to it. So let me just reiterate again, this book by Rob Moore. It's called Never Too Late to Start. Uh, it's called Get uh, Start Now, Get Perfect Later. But there are many quotes in there. Again, amazing, uh, easy steps for you to take, uh, for you to have to take action and start pursuing what it is that you want to pursue. Okay, so perfect timing for those who've just joined us. I hope I'm not not admitted anybody. I, I will just keep an eye on them, people joining us today. Thank, thanks again for uh, for joining me and, and tuning in tonight. Uh, again, you guys could be doing anything but you're here with me. So I, it does not escape me how amazing this opportunity is. So I thought I would just do a recap of last month's workshop um, in case you were not able to, to view it or you were not able to join us. So last month's workshop was so fun. We talked about overcoming analysis paralysis, which I'm sure you guys are also familiar with. Analysis paralysis uh, is basically you having uh, an abundance of information about something, thinking that it's going to be productive for you to make the best decision. But on the flip side, you know, the opposite is also true. You know, the paradox of choice by Barry Schwartz, it tells us that when you have so much information, what happens is you start having also bad information. You start carving up in your mind scenarios that are negative and that can be debilitating for you. So instead of you making 
a decision, you make no decision because that's the easier choice to make. So I had given you uh, tips at the end of it all. Simple four tips. So the first is having a different relationship with fear. This was when I shared with you my experience of bungee jumping, where I wouldn't say that I necessarily conquered fear because today, if you were to ask me if I am not afraid of bungee jumping anymore because I did it, that's not true. I am still very, very much afraid of it. So instead of letting fear stop me, I told fear that, hey, we are going bungee jumping today. Like it or not, you are coming with me. And so I jumped with fear that day. So having that relationship with fear is really about befriending fear and not letting it stop you from doing what it is that you want to do. It's going to be there regardless, right? That's why we have traumas and past insecurities, fear of being judged, fear of being a failure, fear of the unknown. These are all things that will cause the paralysis. So instead of fighting it, I think we just have a different relationship with it and say, I know you're here, acknowledge that it's there and do it anyway, right? Courage is not the absence of fear. Remember that courage is not the absence of fear. Courage is the assessment that certain things are just more important than fear. That's by Franklin Roosevelt, and that is so true. So don't feel like because you are afraid that that is therefore a reason for you to not want to pursue something, that shouldn't be the case, right? Fear is going to be there regardless, and that should not stop you. Just befriend it, say, hey, we're going to do this. Are you coming with me? Yes or no? Let's do it. Live your life. The second tip I had given you was set modest goals and do the boring thing. So this is really just to ease the pressure off of you uh, because certain, like I said, there are many fears um, that bombard us that causes analysis paralysis. So the reason why I had highlighted setting uh, modest goals in this particular slide is because I'm gonna dive a little bit more of this on the rest of the workshop. So I thought I would just highlight that. So I won't go into too much about it right now, um, but I'll go more into it as we go along. So the third tip that I had given you was identifying the risks and relooking at how they are worth it. So we are all grown adults here, I'm sure. We all know that risks are real. Risks of being a, of failing is real. Risks of things not working out, think, risks of looking silly or being judged, that's all real, right? That's all real. So you have to see that, you have to weigh it out. Do I want this to be the reason why I don't do something or should I do it anyway because this is gonna give me a full life, it's gonna give me a colorful life and all these fears and failures is going to make me more resilient. So weigh it out. And if it's worth it, then pick the, the more worthy option. Getting to know your intentions, basically just to know why. And, and also I just summed it up last month that sometimes the intentions are to do it for other people. You want to, you want, you're very noble, right? You have, you have parents or, or you want to do it for your, you know, your friends or your family. And that's great. But also know that at the end of the day, you are just as important and you being happy, doing it for your happiness is enough motivation for you to want to pursue something. So know your intentions, know your whys. So these are the four main tips uh, that I had shared with you last month. Again, if you did not manage to listen to that, I hope it goes on YouTube, then you guys can, can check those out. We're gonna go more into setting modest goals this session. So let's dive into it. So the agenda for today, I like to cut my workshops into like three pieces. <laughs> so the first is understanding the what and why, because I'm not a fan of just not understanding the root cause of certain things, right? So let's just kind of acknowledge what procrastination is, what is the reason why you know, we're, we're, we're held back. So I think it's important to dive into that and just kind of understand that a little bit, just put it out there, make it seen and acknowledge it. And then we can go into the how. So part two is going to be the how, uh, where I not only talk about you know, actionable steps, again, inspired by Rob Moore, but also some steps that can influence your mind and certain beliefs. I was at a camp with, your, with some of your kids, Eyes of Truth Camp, which was so much fun, where I taught the kids about the head, the heart, and the hands. So the head is your mind, right? What you can influence your mind with will inspire your heart, which is emotional, and then can inspire you to take actions. Again, knowledge is not power. Knowledge and action is power. 
So again, start with your mind that I'm going to help you with certain beliefs that you have had that's fixated in your mind. We're going to try to correct that. We're going to try to inspire other perspectives on it. And then I can show you certain actions or certain steps that you can consider. Again, I'm not here to force anything upon you. If you feel like it is something that resonates with you that you want to try, please do try it. And then I'll also show, with you, show you some steps that you can take to sustain it. There is a chat function here. Please feel free to include any comments that you want throughout the workshop. I will read it um, at the end or along the way. And again, when this goes on YouTube, you guys can also write down, you know, whether these steps had helped you on the channel and on the comment section, or you can reach me uh, in my Instagram and you can comment there as well. Because I do want you to take home all these tips. That's part three. You take that home and you let me know whether it works for you. And uh, yeah, so you let me know whether it works for you. Okay. Let's dive into the what and the why. Procrastination. I'm sure you know what procrastination is. In fact, I have procrastinated a lot in my life. I'm sure you have too. So what is procrastination? I look at this man. I'm sure we've all been, you know, this man lying on, on the bed um, at some point in our, in our lives, knowing that there is something that is waiting for us that we need to do that's really, really important but we feel like, you know what, I'm just going to do that other thing. It could be actually productive procrastination where you do tasks that are important, but just not as important as that one thing that is waiting for you. So procrastination definition, the act of unnecessarily postponing decisions or actions. And we've all been there. I don't have to really explain so much about what procrastination is. I think we all have had enough experience about that. But maybe I can just let you know of the effects of it. So it is detrimental to people's ability to successfully pursue their goals, and it also causes increased stress. So it not only robs you of the opportunities to do what it is that you want to do. So for instance, for me, as I shared earlier on, if you missed in my, in my introduction, me finding my way here right now was a year-long process. I had to make so, so many interviews I have to make to I have to attend so many interviews I had to make so much research uh, to see how I can be given an opportunity such as this so I've been a host for 10 years I had no certification on on you know coaching people or educating people in public speaking and it was a really daunting thing for me to have to do a career change so when I just told myself you know, I'll figure it out along the way, or I'll start when I know all the information. That was me procrastinating, coming up with a bunch of excuses just so that I don't actually start the work that I want to do. So that is procrastination. Again, something that's robbing me of an opportunity or a goal. Had I procrastinated even longer, I would not have been here, it would have been some other person right in front of you. And yeah, so procrastination, first of all, robs you of an actual tangible goal in front of you. The second thing that it does, it also actually increases strength, uh, increases stress. So that actually affects you emotionally as well and mentally, right? So it's not just taking away something physical in front of you, which is an opportunity to pursue something or color your life and make it more fulfilling, but it also causes stress in your head and in your heart and in your body it could totally manifest in you because you know that there's something weighing on you that you need to do. You constantly think about it. It is exhausting, not only thinking about having to do it, but you also start weighing out the pros and the cons, possibly more cons, such as the fears and the risks involved. So naturally, it will cause you stress. So it deteriorates your well-being overall on top of not allowing you to pursue what it is that you want to pursue. So all in all, procrastination is not something to applaud, but it's very real. And in fact, a lot of research has said that it is a human trait. It is a normal human trait. It is a form of indecisiveness, again, that we all experience. And why do we do this? Again, this is something that I've explained last month where we have all these fears that, you know, we want to avoid, which is natural, right? It is form a form of protecting ourselves. We want to protect ourselves from threatening situations. So we decide that, you know, it's much easier and much safer for us to not do it at all. Another reason why procrastination exists is because of perfectionism. And I am like the queen of, someone's coming. I am the queen of perfectionism. We all want to do things 100% with 100% accuracy. We want to make sure that whatever we give out, whatever the output is, has to be perfect. So in order to do that, I'm going to put in as much work I have to 
practicing for it. We are dress rehearsing for something that hasn't even happened yet, right? We're doing all these different research. We're asking all these people, gathering all this information because we want to be perfect at what we do. If we're not, again, we are afraid of being judged or being silly or, or being a failure. So we wanna be, we wanna make sure that we are prepared in all angles. And again, that prolongs procrastination because you will never be ready, right? There'll be so much information that you have to get. And if you use that as an excuse, as I'm not ready because I don't have all the information, then you'll never get started. Again, you'll never pursue the goals and then you'll just be more stressed. In fact, that is the root cause of analysis paralysis. All this information, thinking that that's preparing you to pursue something, at the end of the day, you don't even pursue it at all. Um, and yeah, it robs you of an opportunity, which is really sad. And I don't want you to do that. And I want to be the living example of you taking a chance on yourself and, you know, getting start, getting started even before you're ready. Get started now and, and you know, be perfect later. And again, this is just a, a form of us protecting our self-worth. It's a form of self-preservation or self-protectionism. We just want to make sure that we are okay at the end of it. Again, it's a very human thing. Who wants to go out and be like, I want to harm myself? Nobody wants to do that. We want to make sure that we are safe. And if it's threatening to us, it's much easier if we don't do it. But if we keep avoiding those things, then we will never do anything new, right? We will never build resilience or strength. We will never have cool experiences to share years to come to our kids about the things that I've done, how I failed, how I've learned, and the things that you shouldn't do because I had to learn it the hard way. So if you want that kind of life, procrastination obviously is not the answer. So what I can help you with is understanding the how, how to overcome procrastination, taking action and then sustaining it. So as I mentioned earlier, I just wanted to have all of us in the right headspace. So there are certain beliefs that we've had that we are fixated on. And it all starts with the mind. So again, I'm going to start with the head and then hopefully inspire the heart and then the hands. So that's the hands will be the actionable practical tips that I can give you. These tips have helped me honestly, genuinely to step out of my comfort zone, to do things that seemed daunting to me. And that's why I'm here today doing something that hopefully helps at least one of you. That's all, that's my goal for today, to just to make a difference. Um, and so I hope you guys would come on board. So it all starts with the mind and your beliefs. First thing that I want you to know and want you to have a change of perspective on is that your work is not a definition of who you are. So you need to have some sort of differentiation between your output and the definition of who you are. So there needs to be a defense wall between the two. Because just because your output is not perfect that day does not make you any less creative. It does not make you any less hardworking or determined, right? That was the fear that I had. I felt like, what if what I do is not good enough? I go to all these different interviews, telling them that all my experience is such and such. I did not have a valid you know, example of me succeeding in coaching people. And I was so tied to that, but I need to realize that what I give out, what the output is, does not define who I am. It does not diminish my gifts. It does not diminish my greatness. So I want you to know that as well. The world is going to criticize you no matter what. They're going to judge you regardless, but they have to, you have to look at that as a judgment of your work. So you can be serious about your work. If they want to comment on your work or your product or your output, then that is a separate thing of who you are. At the end of the day, I know my worth. I know that I may not get it right this time, but I'll get it the second time or the third time or the fourth time. Failure, I want you to know, is never ever personal. You just had a bad day does not make you a bad person. So I want you to just know that your work is not your worth. The world will judge your work, but make sure that you are kind to you. So that's the first thing that I want you to have in your mind, to have the clear defense between your work and your worth. The second one is you can make decisions. So this is when I don't want you to ever, ever label yourself as unmotivated or that you're lazy or that you're indecisive. Don't label yourself 
as that. Labels have huge impact and it gives you such an excuse if you label yourself as, you know, a lazy person. You would think that, oh, I'm not a person who's able to make decisions. I'm just the whatever guy. I'm just the anything guy. No, I'm sure there is certain things in your life that you are very decisive about and use that as your decision muscle that you can build on. The truth is the more decisions you make in life, the faster you can make decisions in other aspects of your life. It's a muscle. The smarter you can be, the smarter you are to make these decisions and the better able you are to analyze things, the pros and the cons, what is the best thing that you should do. So again, you can make the decisions. If you are able to make decisions in other parts in your life, use that as an experience for you to build the muscle and then make the decisions in this particular one. So that there's no procrastination, right? You're just ready to go. So if you think that fear and failure can reduce that muscle, then progress and success can actually increase it. So base yourself based on the past experiences that you've had where you've been very, very decisive, whether it's, oh, when I travel, I know exactly where to go. I'm such a planner. I, I can, I can decide on where to eat or where is the safest place for my family to you know, go and enjoy themselves. So that's still a decisiveness. So if you can be decisive in those areas in your life, then you just apply that to what it is that you wanna do in this time and take that action. The third, the third belief that I hope that you take away from this is that all decisions start small. And I think sometimes we believe that it's so daunting to make this one big decision that's gonna be the end all be all. And that's not true. In life, you'll be surprised at how small decisions that you make all throughout your life, these are preceding decisions that compound you towards the big one. So life is all about small, small decision making. That day when you decide to read that article, that particular day when you decide to listen to that podcast, you don't think that that's actually affecting the bigger goal. But the truth is, it is. So these are all small decisions. And I understand. So the reason why I said to set, set modest goals in the beginning was something I wanted to highlight today, again, from last month, was because I know it's not easy. I know it's not easy to start small. If it was, everyone would have done it, right? Then why are we here today? We will be full of people who always take action and never have procrastination as, you know, as, some, as a hindrance to us to pursue our goals. But the reason why it's small, I want you to understand this, that we are a society of high achievers. So we always reward people who make big decisions, right? You know the phrase, go big or go home? We feel like minuscule decisions are not as important because it does not move the needle. But the truth is, it does. You, don't, you never know what one single decision can lead you to. So just be constantly reminding yourself that all these small decisions can help to make the greater one. And if you know that all you have to do is make these small decisions, it takes the pressure off, right? Because you are not being afraid by something that is daunting, that is big, that you have to understand or get, get to know every single angle of it. You just have to make that small decision today. So for me, it was just, okay, I'm gonna watch this one motivational speech and see how she does it. How does she coach? And I think that, oh man, is it really moving the needle right now? Am I really making a difference? No. The things that I learned from that video, I'm sharing with you guys today. This book, had I known that this would be very useful, I would have taken notes on every single page. I just took notes on a few because you never know. All these small decisions are actually preparing you for the big one that's coming. And I understand that it's not easy. So I'm going to give you some practical, actionable steps. So this is actually a series of steps um, that I have followed myself, and they are inspired by the books that I've read or the podcasts that I've listened to. And maybe you guys have tried it yourself or, you know, you're familiar with this or this has worked for you. Of course, you can comment and you let me know if you have done something like this. And I want this to also be an activity for us. Okay, so the things that I share with you today, we can do it right now, right this instance, in fact, right? And I want to see it if, if we can do that. So the first actionable step that worked for me, again, I'm no psychologist or therapist, is public declarations. 
telling people about what it is that you want to do. You cannot underestimate how this can be a real motivator for you. So I know that sometimes we have this belief that if I told someone, it's going to jinx it. If I told someone, then if I don't do it, then they're going to laugh at me or they're going to judge me. So I want you to start with people that you trust. I have a friend. I won't say what her name is. She was the first person I told about me wanting to start a career in coaching or educating. She never judged me. She believed in me more than I believed in myself. She told me on the many ways that I could do it, how I can start small. She is not in the business at all. She is not in the industry. She does not host anything, but she was such a genuine friend who can get a little spicy at times. And she would check in on me. She would literally check my progress and make sure that Hey, what are you doing about this goal that you've had? Because the truth is, it's easy to let yourself down, but it's not as easy to let other people down. So they hold you accountable. Can You can call it nagging as, as, as sometimes I, I, I accuse her of that. So like, can you please stop? But it's good. It's good to have someone hold you accountable because you can have, you know, all those, you know, relaxing days and feel like, oh, I'm going to start on this tomorrow and tomorrow. But when she's constantly texting and, you know, just checking on, in on you, genuinely wanting to help you, knowing that this is what you want to pursue, she gets, she makes sure that I'm, I'm, I stay in check. So she is basically the friend who, who will nag at me even if I don't feel like doing anything that day. So she checks on me. She even sent me links, okay, links of places that I should check out um, about coaching, links about different motivational spe speeches that I should be listening to that can help me in my next session, a different workshop. She even like sent me like salary comparisons on the places that I that I should, you know, work at. So she is a true friend. And so don't underestimate public declarations. The truth is when you are able to put it out to the world, you're actually manifesting it. And I believe in manifestation, right? It becomes real. When you say it, it becomes real. We had a camp, um, as I mentioned earlier with um, the kids at Eyes of Truth, where we had the kids write down their passions and draw out, you know, creatively how they envision it. And I thought it was so brilliant. So brilliant. I do that as well. I do write on, on a journal what it is that I want to do. When you write it down, your vision gains clarity. And then you become something that, okay, it's out in the world. And the universe will conspire to help people who want to help themselves. The universe favors the bold. So when you put it out to the universe, the universe will be able to give you things around that will help you pursue what it is that you want to do. It's called traction, right? The energy that you put out will be something that you'd attract back. So if you want to pursue something, then you say it out loud and suddenly everywhere you look is an opportunity for you to pursue that or for you to learn something. Again, make small decisions so that you can make the big one. And that is so true. Once I put it out, you know, YouTube and the algorithm, they start sharing me more things and also on social, you put it out there. This is what I want to watch on social media. That's what I keep getting. And you keep learning and you keep believing that this is so possible for me and this is so feasible suddenly everything becomes more real and more realistic shall I put it that way it becomes more realistic to pursue certain things especially when you watch you know different podcasts and you see other people do it and then you think to yourself if they can do it then I can do it right nothing out here is so out of the ordinary um, many people have gone before you so it's always best to learn from them which brings me to my next point, which is enlisting mentors or join a community. This is for guidance and for counsel. So it's great to have my friend, but as I mentioned, she's not in the industry. It's great to talk to people who are experienced. Um, so for me, it was joining Speech Academy Asia. So they are people who are like reputable in this. I can learn a lot from Lucas. I can learn a lot from the different trainers that I meet. Uh, and it's been so beneficial for me. And in terms of community, you don't feel like you have to join some sort of like Facebook community or like some forum, which is great if you do. We, by the way, are the community. So if you can just go to the chat group and share among us right now, or if you're watching this on YouTube and in the comment section, just write it down, type it out, what it is that you want to do, what it is that you've been thinking about doing, but you know haven't felt like you had the tools to do it or the resources to do it or haven't had the inspiration or the motivation. It's important to write it down and we as a community will help you as much as we can. So again, enlisting mentors 
is seeking guidance and never see that as a weakness, it is a strength. The thing about having people guide you along the way is they will help you refine your tasks. So let's say you want to do something and they can show you the easier the way to do something. And they can even like slice it up for you so that things become more feasible for you to pursue. They will tell you that, oh, instead of you pursuing this big thing that seems so daunting and might take years to, uh, to accomplish, how about you chop it up in many things? Start off with this and then that. So they will help you refine your tasks. So that's always a plus, right? If you want to simplify your life, if you want to simplify the information that you're getting and make sure that you don't suffer from analysis paralysis by all this information that's coming out, then I think you should have a mentor or someone that you know is experienced in the field to be with you through that journey. On the other hand, they can also help you in addressing certain hindrances that may come along the way. And this is also very true. So they can let you know based on the experiences, the obstacles that they have faced and how you should prepare yourself in order to overcome them or certain things that you shouldn't do to avoid those things. Again, this can help us curb our fear of failure, right? Because if that's what we are afraid of, they will be the source of, of um, comfort and also the source of information for you to know that, okay, if this would have happened, this is what you do. If this would happen, these are the consequences of it. This is how we're going to recover. So enlisting mentors and joining communities. So I joined Speech Academy Asia and they have been so helpful in kind of guiding me uh, throughout this journey, also letting me know about the parents that I'll be meeting or the kids that I'll be meeting. Uh, and I also, you know, joining that camp um, a, a week ago, actually, you know, really taught me about how the curriculum works. What is it that, you know, kids are drawn to in terms of activities or, you know, are they more of a listening to a lecture type of, you know, a bunch or are they more of a, you know, kinesthetic and they like to move around and they like to have fun and have games and rewards um, and being and the opportunity to be in front of their friends and speaking out loud. So yeah, enlisting mentors and joining community is big and never ever see that as a weakness that you're seeking help. You should see that as something that is positive and it's a form of strength that's gonna only make you stronger. The next one is to give yourself a deadline. Don't you love my like little slides and like the Aurora lights? Yes, it's important to give yourself a deadline because I think from this book as well, you would feel like I should always have all the information I need before I start. Then when is that gonna be? You know, there's an abundance. In fact, there's an infinite amount of information in the world that you can gather. And if you keep wanting to gather more, I don't have, I don't have enough. You know, this is not sufficient. I need to research more. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. You'll never be ready. So I want you to know that as there is an infinite amount of information out there, you are infinitely creative. You are infinitely resourceful. So just give yourself a deadline. Right. Say so like, I'm going to find as much I'm going to find out as much as I can for the next couple of weeks before I have to do something about it. And then along the way, you can supply yourself with more information. OK, just get started first. So set a deadline of when that starting is going to be and then you can learn along the way after you do that. So this is basically to help you with your fear um, or your your perfectionism, something that we all experience with, I'm sure it's especially me, I'm like number one guilty queen of perfectionism, where I feel like I want to make sure that my output is perfect. So therefore I need to, you know, learn as much as I can. I want to be such a student, right? I, I need to be such a studious person and gather as much information as I can so that when I'm ready to do it, I'll be perfect and everybody's so proud of me and they'll be super wow. But that is such an unrealistic <laughs> expectation to have. Who is perfect at the thing that they do the first time. It's not a fair expectation to put on yourself. And it's also not an expectation, a fair expectation for you to put on your kids. So get a deadline, set it up, say, I'm going to do this uh, for two weeks. I'm going to do as much research as I can. And after that, I need to know my own abilities, my own resourcefulness, and that I'm going to be able to figure it out along the way. So figure it out as you go, not before you go. Remember that start now and get perfect later. No one has the answers um, at, at the start. The next thing that has worked for me is tracking your progress. Now, 
I am the queen of lists. I love to make lists um, at work. And then from that list, I have a sub list of like the priorities. I put little stars on them, like the things that I need to do. So the truth is what gets measured gets done. So make a list of the things that you need to do within that period of time. Again, within your schedule saying that, I'm going to do this much research. After that, I'm going to apply for this different interviews, the same as I did, give that timeline. And then once I start working, I'm gonna make sure that I also have a progress or a track record on you know, the improvements that I'm making for myself. So track your progress, hence you know, the, the, the train, train tracks, write down what your desired action is. Again, manifesting, putting down on paper, this is what I'm gonna do. And then you can do a little tick or a cross of whether you got it done. And then if it's not, it's carried forward to the next day. Then you see how that can adjust your schedule. So track your progress, super helpful. Make a list, put it down on paper, see it. And then you're able to action it up once you see it on paper. What gets measured gets done. Now we're moving on to how to sustain it, right? So as I mentioned before, motivation is how you get started. But habits is certain things that you can have to keep you moving forward. So how you can keep on keeping on. So I don't want to just have that spark of motivation and that, okay, I'm going to do this first. And then how do I you know, carry forward? Because it's going to be quite the journey, whatever it is that you want to pursue. If it's you know something lofty in your mind, if it's something that is causing you analysis paralysis, I'm pretty sure that it is super important to you and it's not just a menial task. And I get it. I get it. So I want to make sure that we have the stamina to want to carry forward um, what it is that we want to pursue in the time to come. Whatever it is that you want to do, it could take years, you know, dare I say, even like maybe a decade, right? Me hosting for a decade led me here. So that was the journey that I had to take. So had I given up at any point in my life, I would not have gotten here. So even the years that I felt like, you know, hosting or, or being an MC was not beneficial for me or it wasn't fulfilling for me or I felt like you know the gigs were not uh, what I wanted had I given up that then I would not have had those other years that were beautiful that were meaningful to me and then of course I would not have had the epiphany that there's more that I can do with my voice um, and I won't be here today so now I'm going to share with you just a couple of tips I'm very cautious of time here just a couple of tips on how you can sustain it sustain the action once you get started which is great and I'll applaud you for that so the first one is giving yourself rewards along the way again this is in a, a journey this is going to be a long journey if it's something that you want to pursue that is you know big but you should be able to enjoy the experience you know and I, I put here after being productive you need to do things that are restorative thing that I learned is the opposite of play is not work. The opposite of play is depression. So listen to that again. The opposite of play is not work. The opposite of play is depression. We need to make sure that we give ourselves a break sometimes. Otherwise, our mental health, our emotional health will seriously deteriorate. We are living in a fast paced, high achieving world and we want to do all these great things but we wanna make sure that our health, our mental health is also being looked after, right? Rest and play are vital to our health as nutrition is, as exercise. So make sure that you're also taking care of your, of your mental health. So if you feel like you have you know, gotten started and you are doing all these amazing things, reward yourself and whatever that could mean. It could mean taking a nap, it could mean I want to watch Netflix, I want to do some mindless social media, you know, reading, that's fine. As long as you take a break, you know, go out, you know, watch a movie, wear a mask, <laughs> go out and, and just, you know, go, go to nature, go to the beach, do something that's relaxing for yourself to just make sure that you are, you have the stamina and you have the mental ability to keep on keeping on. Because when you're well rested, and I keep you not, is when creativity can come in, when the good vibes can come in, and that can inspire you. If you are in a box and you're constantly just focused on your goals, you're not allowing 
you know, the outside world inspire you. You're so closed off and you're so focused. There are ways that that is a good thing. That there are days where that's a good thing, but also you are shutting yourself out from other forms of inspiration. You know, you never know when you're watching Netflix or you're watching a movie or you're reading a book or you're watching, you know, some videos on, on YouTube, how that can be sources of creativity for you, sources of inspiration for you. And what I mentioned last, um, last month was to make sure that your mind is always open, right? To always be receptive to the opportunities or the messages that the universe is able to give you. If you're closed off and you feel like, I'm just gonna work, 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 work all day, and that's going to be my life, then you're, you're robbing yourself of, of the different you know, experiences or adventures that life has to offer and different information that can help you change your perspective. So whatever it is, whatever, place that you go to, you know, or whatever source of media that you consume, make sure that you have an open mind and know that this is not just, you know, something that is going to, you know, be be productive. I'm not going to be productive today. I'm just going to have an open mind. I'm just going to let whatever um, that's around um, seep into me and inspire me. And that can actually help you in the long run as well. So don't forget to play. Don't forget to rest and do things that are restorative. So give yourself rewards along the way and not only at the end. When you do achieve what it is that you want to achieve, like me getting this gig, have a celebration, okay? I went out with my friends and we had like desserts and ice cream and we hung out all night long to celebrate this. Of course, you can celebrate at the end. I want you to celebrate all the little wins in your life. You should do that. And you should also tell your kids, you know, the little things that they do along the way should be rewarded. For the camp that I went with, with the kids, I saw this boy, you know, just giving a seat to somebody who was older than him. And he thought no one saw it, but I saw it. And I rewarded him for that. It's okay for that particular challenge, he didn't win. But for that little that little gesture that he did, I was able to reward him for that. Again, it was a long day, a long journey, but little wins you know, still matter and still makes a difference. It still moves the needle more than you know. The final one, and I did not like that I ended on 2.9 and not 2.10, but this is something that also worked for me at the end of it, you have to make sure that you have small and steady improvements, right? Again, you are infinitely resourceful and you get information along the way. So make sure that you incorporate this in whatever it is on your list so that, you know, this can ensure their sustainability so that you're always progressing. Start small, you know, start steady. Don't make anything radical. If something does not work out or you learn something new, then you're like, I'm going to scratch it and I'm going to just start, start anew. Try to work and workshop what it is that you have to make just small and steady improvements. This will not make things too daunting for yourself. This will just make it, okay, feasible. Me just making this small adjustment for today and see how that's going to affect what it is that I want to do next. What are the next steps for that? So just try to maneuver it just a little bit, make these you know, small adjustments through whatever it is that you are working on and make sure that you're constantly improving. So you start small and then you progress and you advance further from that. Okay, again, I don't want to, you to feel overwhelmed at all. And when you're able to build on it a little bit by little bit, this is how you scale up, right? All these small decisions, once again, is a way for you to make something you know, impactful at the end of the day where your output is going to be great as it is basically a, a, a combination of preceding smaller decisions that you've made um, leading up to that big event, whatever it is. And now I think we are super good on time. So I'm very lucky I'm on to my last two slides. Some take home activities and I hope that you are able to uh, share with me if this worked for you or this is something that you guys have already you know practiced on the daily and I'm also very very interested in what it is that you are here for and what it is that you want to pursue I'm sure you are here today to get some sort of motivation or or inspiration to get you started and want some tips and I hope I help you with that so what I've done is synthesized everything into one slide so consider these steps so you can see the pictures, like little steps, and hopefully, you know, you get paradise. Public declarations and accountability. So homework number one is tell somebody, tell somebody you trust. You can tell me, you can trust me. Okay, I'm totally cool. I failed many times in my life. Um, no big deal. 
tell me and you know be proud of it tell me what your action plan is what it is that you want to do um, what is the first step that you're going to take and then where i can help i can nag at you i can check in on you day in and day out how is that progressing have you done it you know what is the next steps for that so you can write on the chat box here or you can write it on youtube uh, when you go on there on our channel comment there or you can find me on instagram you can write me there his hey Roz, um i've done this i've told this person that i'm going to do this and then let's see what that leads you. Second is enlisting mentors or joining a community. As I mentioned, we are a little community. I'm going to be here every month. So look out for, you know, I think the marketing team, they share all these, you know, workshops and the links. I'm going to be here. I will be a community. I want to check in on you guys. I want to know you guys by name. There are not that many people here. I'm sure there'll be more on YouTube. So we can totally just chat here. It's a two-way street. This is a conversation. So we are your community. I want you guys to, you know, lean on each other. If it's something that you want to do, let us know. And if you know someone who's actually experienced in the industry, more power to you. Go for that, you know, and see how they can help you. Again, Speech Academy Asia has been so helpful for me uh, in teaching me how to be an educator, how to be a coach. And yeah, I hope I, I did them proud today. Three, of course, deadline. What gets measured gets done. And that is so true. Tell yourself, I'm going to do this research for the next two weeks. And after that, we're on our way. And that should be the way because you're never going to know all the information in the world right now because there's going to be infinite. And I don't want you to suffer from analysis paralysis. Um, so give yourself a deadline and then start doing something. Track your progress. Of course, this is you know, very standard, and but don't underestimate it. I think what you put down on paper is always helpful um, for you to follow through with. Um, so track your progress, make sure that you are doing certain things that you have set yourself out to do. Again, this coincides with the deadline. This coincides with having a schedule, right? Writing out what I'm gonna do for the next two months. These are the steps I'm gonna do. Track your progress and also be forgiving. So that's number five, right? Give yourself rewards for that day. If you had like 10 things on your list and you accomplished like five, kudos to you. I would still applaud myself if I can get that done because again, this is like something probably like a passion project on the side that you want to do, certain goals that you want to do outside of your, you know, your nine to six, right? So no pressure on necessarily pursuing it right here, right now. So if you're able to do five of the things on your list, reward yourself. In fact, if it's like that one thing that you do today, as opposed to, you know, not doing anything at all, still reward yourself. Make sure that you're checking in on yourself and that you are resting and that you are also having fun and that you are, you know, play. Make sure that there's play. It's not just for kids. You know, parents can also watch Netflix or go out or go bungee jumping, go to the beach and hang out with your friends, have some drinks um, and chill out with them, you know, with the COVID measures in place, of course. And, and make sure that you enjoy enjoy the, the whole journey. And at the end, when you do achieve what it is, I want to be the first to congratulate you as I have congratulated myself and, and celebrate and have a party because those are a little successes um, in your life that's going to color it. I feel like I want all of us to be more than just one thing, more than just, I'm just a mother and therefore this is what I do, which is a great noble thing. If that makes you happy, then great. If that's fulfilling and that's everything, wonderful. If you feel like there's more to life that you want to see or things that you've always thought about doing, even if it's like knitting or, or you want to learn how to paint, those are still things that will help you be more creative and more things, uh, more experienced and you're able to share with your kids on the things that you have done and, and how the world is so full of opportunities, full of adventures. You don't have to go to all these places that I've put here on my slides to have an adventurous life. You know, just having different experiences, big or small, far, wide, or right outside your doorstep is still something and it still can color your life and can give you a more fulfilling life. So the final one that I want to make sure um, that you consider, I'm not going to enforce any of this in you, is to make sure that there are improvements to it. For me, I did my workshop last month. I watched the video again. I was there for one hour. I watched it. I watched it a couple of times and I was you know, I saw a lot of ums throughout my videos. So I'm very cautious today to make sure that I, I didn't do that. So these are little small improvements of myself that I'm making. 
So if it's something that you're pursuing and you feel like there's opportunity to improve or that you've learned something new that day and you can apply that to you know, your next thing on the list, please do apply that. And don't, make, don't feel the pressure to make radical changes. Just small, constant, steady improvements will do. And before you know it, you're hitting the home run. So these are the six things that I hope that you can take with you. I think we're good on time here. I hope, I think so. Okay, so again, I'm just gonna finish this off with Rob Moore's book, which is Start Now and Get Perfect Later. Um, this beautiful scenery, I hope you feel inspired somehow. Uh, know that the world is full of different opportunities, different adventures that await you. And it's never too late to start, really it isn't. And I, I hope I've you know, impacted you in some way, if I can share with you one useful tip or one useful quote that can open your heart and mind to pursue what it is that you want to pursue, then I have done my job. So I think I am done. I am done with all I've shared today. It's such great fun. And I look forward to seeing you guys again next month to look out for the, I think it's like a letter or some email that goes out do look out for that. And then I hope to catch you guys then. You can also let us know what it is that you want us to talk about. I'm more than happy to share with you all my books that I've read that I can share with you. Finally, can tell someone about it. Uh, the things that have helped me along the way that you know really made an impact to me and is also the big reason why I am here today. So thank you for making my dreams come true, being you know a so-called coach tonight. And I hope I helped you, I really do. So let's check out the um, chat here. Ah, <laughs> uh, see you guys. Okay, so I think that is all from me tonight. I hope you guys have dinner. I hope you have a great week ahead and whatever it is that you wanna do, I wish you all the best and you are amazing. Bye. Thank you so much, Rose. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.